Welcome to the Healthy, Wealthy, and Smart Podcast. Each week, we interview the best and brightest in physical therapy, wellness, and entrepreneurship. We give you cutting-edge information you need to live your best life, healthy, wealthy, and smart. The information in this podcast is for entertainment purposes only and should not be used as personalized medical advice. And now, here's your host, Dr. Karen Litzy. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the program. I'm so happy to have you joining me today. My guest for today's episode is Dr. Soren Sko. He is an associate professor at the University of Southern Denmark and Regional Zealand Hospitals in Denmark. He has vast experience within the field of early treatment of knee pain and has been the principal investigator of three high-quality randomized controlled trials, one of which was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, the highest ranked of all general medical journals. Soren is one of the main architects behind the implementation of the highly successful treatment program, Good Life with Osteoarthritis in Denmark, which we talk about in depth in this episode. And it is a program for patients with knee and hip pain. Furthermore, he is a recipient of the prestigious Sapper Ard Research Talent Award from the Danish Council for Independent Research and several other research awards. So I met Soren back in February at Sports Congress in Copenhagen, where we recorded a quick episode for the BJSM podcast. And in this episode, we dive a little bit deeper into the why behind the GLAD program. Why did he and Eva Roos feel like this program was necessary? We talk about the education of physical therapists in developing care in accordance with clinical guidelines, the National GLAD registry for data collection and evaluation of results, and what those results are a growing global support of the GLAD program, and patient education and neuromuscular exercises for patients with OA-like symptoms, primarily for the hip and knee. So the GLAD program is a great program. All the links for the program are over at the podcast at podcast.healthywealthysmart.com under this episode. So if you want more information, if you want to bring the GLAD program to your country, head over to the podcast show notes. So one click and it'll take you to everything you need to know. In the meantime, enjoy this episode with Dr. Sko. Hey, Soren, welcome to the podcast. I'm happy to have you on. Thank you very much and thank you for having me. Of course. So we spoke briefly in Copenhagen when you were on the BJSM podcast. And so I'm happy to have you on my podcast so we can really expand on what the GLAD program is really all about. So GLAD is the Good Life with Osteoarthritis Denmark. So can you tell the listeners a little bit more about the why behind the program? Why did you start it? Well, yes. Um, So for several years, a couple of decades actually, we have had evidence supporting exercise and education as treatment of osteoarthritis. But we developed GLAD out of frustration because even though we had the evidence, the implementation was missing. Uh, We had spent some time discussing with healthcare administrators in the healthcare regions of Denmark and municipalities of Denmark in order to do kind of a top-down approach to implementing the uh, clinical guidelines for knee osteoarthritis back in 2011-2012, but nothing happened. So we decided to do it on our own, to use a bottom-up approach to the implementation by having small pilot projects spread around uh, the country and then just see how how it uh, would go. And I know you're not doing this alone. So who else has joined you on this? So when we started GLAD, it was a collaboration between myself and Professor Eva Roos uh, from the University of Southern Denmark, who is uh, well known for her research within exercise and osteoarthritis. And since then, we have added a lot of very important people like database manager and a day-to-day contact uh, physio with, with the officials of the program and a lot of other very, very important people in order to support the whole program. Right, because you started this. What year did this start, this program? So we started in 2012 or had the first course for PTs in 2013. Um, 
but you know for the, the first course of course there were a lot of preparation and and all the materials had to be developed and, and be ready but but the program started in january 2013 and since then you've had how many patients go through the program and how many physical therapists go through the program so if we focus on on denmark alone as, as we will come back to later there are other countries uh, we have around 33,000 patients with knee or hip osteoarthritis who have undergone the program. And we have taught around 11 to 1,200 mostly physical therapists, but it could also be other healthcare practitioners in delivering the program to the patients. And let's talk about the program. What does it entail? Yeah, so there are kind of three mandatory elements of GLAD. Uh, I would say. So first of all is the education of the physical therapist in delivering the program. And to, to put it uh, popularly, you could say that they get a toolbox to bring home with all the material and instructions needed in order to develop or to deliver this uh, evidence-based treatment. They then go home and offer two sessions of patient education, teaching the patient about their disease and how to self-manage the disease. And at least uh, six weeks of neuromuscular exercise twice weekly, which is, of course, individualized to the individual patient. And importantly, the third mandatory element is the registration of patient data in the National GLAD register, because this is, of course, important if we want to bring this forward, forward as an evidence and effective treatment program. We need to have data to support it on a national basis. Absolutely. And now let's talk for just a quick second on that, on that data that you're using and that you're collecting. What have you seen so far? So again, just uh, looking at, at uh, the Danish uh, data, first of all, we see a lot of people who are very satisfied with participating. Nine out of 10 are either pleased or very pleased with the program. And, and nine out of 10 also state that they use what they have learned at least once weekly. And this is, of course, important because long-term adherence is important for the long-term effect. But if we look specifically at the, the effects of the program, we can see that immediately after the program, pain goes down uh, between 22 to 27%. Uh, uh, one out of three stops taking pain medication. Walking speeds goes up, quality of life goes up. And then what is very interesting and important is if we look at the results nine months after the participants have ended the program or participated in GLAD, so nine months after participating, we actually see that the effects are maintained. And another interesting finding at, at the 12-month follow-up is that the sick leave goes down. We actually see that, that it goes down by 44% in people with knee OA and 25% APOA patients. Of course, we won't know whether or not they have, would have been off sick leave if they hadn't participated. But since it's a chronic disease, it kind of gives you an indication of how powerful exercise and education actually are if you give it in the right way to the patients. And did any of those results re surprise you at all? Well, we, we, we knew from the, the randomized trials, uh, more than 50 randomized trials that had taken uh, place uh, at this time, that pain and quality of life and function improves in the short term. But we also know that the long-term effects are not as good since or probably because people do not adhere to the treatment after ending a supervised uh, session or group of sessions. Uh, so what surprised us most is the long-term effects and the effects on, on sick leave and pain medication, I would say. Yeah, that is, I, I would think so. Adherence is so hard. I mean, it, if you're a clinician, you know how difficult it is to get your patients to adhere to an exercise program. So what are you guys doing that people are adhering to this? What did you say? A, a lot of people were still doing some of the things that they were taught at least once a week, which is not bad because a lot of people do it zero. So what are you guys doing to get people to adhere to the program? Well, I would say is, uh, the education is key to the effects, the long-term effects. I believe that the, 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 the educational 
program, even though it's probably not the thing that uh, that you know improves their pain in the short term, it's the thing that keeps them going after participating in the supervised program. So they have learned that that they have to keep on being physically active. The physical therapist helps them after ending the program with uh, deciding which exercise type of exercise they should continue doing after the program. And, and they get a lot of uh, motivation and are encouraged uh, to a high extent in order to self-manage their own disease, disease in the long term. So I think that's at least uh, one of the most important uh, components of, of the long-term adherence. And when you're doing, you had mentioned you have two sessions of uh, education for the patients. Are these one-on-one education or is this more of a group education? So everything, also the uh, the uh, exercise program is group based, and what is very important in the educational sessions is actually that since it is group based, it's also it also gives room for the the individuals participating in this group based session to to give each other advice on how to solve specific issues uh, during the daily life, and and you know the patients are the experts in their own disease, so it's of course them that would be able to deliver a lot of uh, important knowledge to each other. So this is a, an important part of the education. It's not just the physio delivering something and then leaving. It's, it's a group-based educational session um, that, that I believe also has an important effect. Okay, so let's get down into a little bit more of the nitty-gritty of the program. So we've got group-based education. The Are the exercise sessions, so if they're the six weeks of exercise two times a week with, let's say, a physiotherapist. Are they all group? Are they one-on-one in some group? How does it work? So uh, most participants of GLAD do the group-based supervised neuromuscular exercise sessions. Uh, The groups are usually from around four and up until 10 participants at the same time. Uh, They are not always doing the same exercises, the fisher would go around and support each individual to ensure that the individual exercise is fitted to, to, to the needs of, of that patient. Um, and some clinics have a rolling uptake, which means that there could be a, a couple of uh, individuals who have had uh, perhaps five, six, seven sessions already, and a couple of new ones coming in for the first sessions. And the new ones could actually learn from those who have had several sessions because they can see, well, if I keep on going for a couple of weeks now, then I could actually be as good as them. So, so I believe that, that the group-based sessions are very supportive also for, for or motivating for, for the patients to continue their, their participation. And I think it also kind of gives people hope. So if they're coming in just starting the program and they can see someone who's maybe a month in – it might give them some hope and some encouragement that, hey, if they're doing this, then maybe I can do it too. And that's really important. Exactly. And what we see is actually that 8 out of 10 participate in at least 10 of the 12 group-based sessions. So most patients are participating in in nearly all sessions uh, with the physio exercise sessions. Okay. So what happens when they're done? They've done their the six week program twice a week for six weeks. Then what? Well, they have an, uh, a follow up after the treatment program where we evaluate the results or their physio evaluate the results with them. But part of this conversation is also focusing on how to keep on being physically active. And you know, some of the program would participate in a continuous neuromuscular exercise program at the local physio clinic. Some would go out in the community and exercise with their, their colleagues or friends, and some would go out on their own. But it's all about the physio and the patient deciding which uh, way is the better in order to keep you physically active for the rest of your life. So th- that's an important component after the treatment program to, to ensure, again, the long-term adherence and effect. And is there follow-up with each of the patient participants? Let's say they leave the program. Do you follow up monthly, bi-monthly, every couple of months? There is only the uh, follow-up at 12 months. So that's corresponding to nearly nine months after leaving the program. 
uh, and that is considered to be the long-term follow-up. We are considering, you know, taking a, a small proportion and following them up, for example, five years after, also to look into uh, how does it go, but also how many have had uh, knee surgery um, mm -hmm. who have participated in, in the program. So, so we have to follow up just after the program and then again at the 12 months. Okay. And could you give an example of maybe two exercises that, that are staples of the program that they perform within these, these 12 week exercise set, or sorry, six weeks of exercises? Yeah. So, so it's, it's, you know, the core of neuromuscular exercise is on, on functional stability or functional alignment. So, so the foot, knee and hip on a straight line, it's kind of the core of most of the exercises. So just to give you one example, that could be the chair stand, which is a very functional exercise. When the patient get up uh, from the chair, they are focused on keeping the foot, knee, and hip aligned. And when they're uh, about to sit down again, they should not bounce down in the chair. They have to control it all the way down to to back on the chair. So the quality and the control is very important. Another exercise that, that is kind of uh, essential to this program is an exercise where you, you stand on one leg and then do hip, ad hip adduction with the other le leg with the TheraBand or, or similar. And what is a bit different from strengthening exercise where the focus is on the leg doing the abduction with the TheraBand, this exercise is actually focusing on the standing leg. So the standing leg has to keep the alignment of the foot, knee, and hip uh, while the other leg is doing the hip adduction with the, um, with the TheraBand. That's actually pretty difficult. You should try it out. It's not that easy as it sounds um, because you're usually too focused on the leg you're doing the abduction, abduction with. And what's also crucial for the program is that this is an exercise program for both the left and the right knee, no matter if you only have OA in the left or right hip or knee. So it is focused on, on the, the body and as a total or at least the lower limbs and, and the core and muscles. Right. So you're not saying if you have OA in the right knee, we just do exercises for the right side of the body. No, exactly. Because it's, it's, a, it's a focus on the overall ability to control and stabilize uh, the, the body and, or at least the, the lower body. And how long are these sessions? So if, let's say we implement this program. I know we'll talk in a second how it's implemented in other parts of the world. But if we want patients to come in for these exercise sessions, what is their expectation of a time commitment? Well, it's uh, usually around one hour. That's the approach. That, or that's kind of the, the, the normal duration of doing the, the full program. In the beginning, it would usually uh, or usually not be all of the exercise that you were able to, to do within the 60 minutes or within the hour. Uh, but in the end, you would be able to do it uh, without any problems within uh, the, the one hour window. And, and that's, that seems to have worked also in other countries. So, so, so it's, uh, it's a feasible approach doing this 12 sessions, six weeks, uh, and one hour each session. And, you know, before we went on the air, you were talking about the, the why behind it, which you, you gave earlier in this interview. And as you're implementing this program, do you see that why being realized? You know, this, because you were saying it needed to, a more pragmatic approach, something, something uh, simple, not dumbed down by any means, but simplified. And as the mm. program evolves, are you seeing that in your vision? Is your vision coming to life with the program? Yeah, definitely. I would say that at, uh, on our web page where patients and physicians and others can go in and see where they can go to a GLAD program nearby where they live. It's, it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's a map of, of Denmark and all parts of the country is covered by GLAD units, which to me shows that the implementation has been successful. And we see the same development in the other countries. And to me, that's the, something that has solved 
the overall issues that we started out with, the, the frustration over the evidence not being implemented in clinical practice. Why do you think that is? I mean, like you said, you're talking over 50 RCTs showing the evidence. Why was it not being implemented? Well, it's, uh, it's a good question. I think it's a multifaceted uh, problem that's not only because of one thing. But, uh, but one thing I certainly believe has been important or crucial for us is the more pragmatic approach to the implementation. Instead of focusing on developing a full model for the full country and, and waiting until some administrator to take this up, we, we just decided to start with one pilot project in one city in, in Denmark. Then we had the first course and more pilot projects or more units uh, delivering this GLAD program came too. And then it just kept on evolving. So I think the pragmatic approach to the implementation has been crucial, giving the clinicians a toolbox to bring home instead of them having to read the evidence and trying to translate that into something uh, clinically useful. Yeah, so you're basically taking all of this information, synthesizing it, simplifying it for the patient and the clinician, and putting it out there into the world. Sounds easy. It's, Sounds like it probably just yeah. took, what, like a couple of months to throw together, right? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Well, it took a bit longer, but I would say the model that we have now developed uh, has already been been um, put into use in, in low back pain. And I would say it could develop into other areas too, you know, supporting uh, other, it could be shoulders, it could be uh, not only muscle skeletal disorders, it could be diabetes and so on. Mm -hmm. So you know, the approach to implementation, the very easily understandable but still evidence-based approach and it has actually led to now and that's kind of a success for us here in Denmark that we have five healthcare regions and one of the healthcare regions have now implemented GLAD and, and all physical therapists uh, who deliver the program has to adhere to, to the guidelines we have developed and they have to report data into to the register otherwise they will not be, get reimbursed so it's you know even though we want to start top down with having the administrators to change practice, we have now changed uh, the administrator's approach by doing the bottom up approach instead. So, so that's the success for us. That's, and did you even think that would ever happen? No, no. definitely <laughs> not. You know, you know, this, as, as I said earlier, it's a, uh, we developed out of frustration. So uh, at the time we just wanted to have, one, two, three, four, five units delivering this program and we would be happy. And now it's spread to other uh, disorders, to other countries and to all over the, the Danish uh, uh, society. So, so no, this is just <laughs> exploded. Yeah, it's amazing. Now let's talk about what other countries is the GLAD program in and how can people in those countries access it? Yeah, so so it uh, it started uh, the first country that that took up the challenge to to implement GLAD in their country besides Denmark was Canada, and they began in 2015 by of course translating uh, all the the documents and resources into English, um, and then they 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 used it even though it it was funded by by Bone and Joint Canada, so it's kind of a more top-down approach. They started with the same approach, which a more feasibility-based study to see, is this actually feasible in, in Canada? And they showed as good or even better results than in Denmark. A patient had an improvement in pain of 40% and also improved in function and quality of life. Uh, and then it's just kept on uh, going out to, to different uh, provinces, uh, uh, the, the last thing I heard is that it's out in eight out of out of the thirteen provinces in in Canada, but still it could have developed even further because it's just exploding, as I said. So so they used uh, you know a similar approach to see if it was feasible, and then developed it out to the other provinces. Okay, then, so it's in Canada. Where else? Yeah, so Canada was the first country, and then. In uh, in the end of 2016, uh, we went to Australia to to teach the first course in in Australia for for Glad Australia uh, at La Trobe uh, University in in Melbourne, um, and that has been the approach in all of the countries. Countries just to get back to that, that we go for the first course, Eva and I, mm -hmm. or other 
uh, of our uh, collaborators in Denmark. And then we teach, uh, train the trainers, you could say. So the future trainers are trained by us and then the, the program are able to manage by their own besides uh, us visiting a couple of times. And that's, of course, important too. But, you know, Glad Australia now has also developed further into other territories uh, or other parts of, of Australia. So uh, I think the first course in Western Australia and Perth just mm -hmm. took place and, yeah, I think and I New saw South Wales media. Uh, courses. Yeah, exactly. So it has, you know, taken the same impressive development, uh, of course, also based on the, the very strong group of people behind the, the program in Australia. But very impressively, it has gone the same way as Canada, the same way as Denmark. And um, they are also uh, helping us to further develop the program by supporting with social media strategies, infographics, YouTubes, mm -hmm. and so on. And this is also part of the community of, of the GLAD program. So we have a call, uh, you know, kind of developed a, a GLAD international network or GIN, popularly said, mm -hmm. to share the experiences and the different possibilities and abilities in different countries to develop the program in total. So if they came up with a good idea to develop GLAD further, that would also benefit Canada and Denmark. And then the last country that I haven't mentioned yet, China, which uh, initiated this uh, program last year. Uh, and, and the very interesting thing about ca China is that they do not have physical therapists uh, treating osteoarthritis in, in general. Mm -hmm. So they had to come up with, with another approach. So it was actually orthopedic surgeons and nurses who are running the GLAD program in China. So imagine uh, in, in your hometown, uh, orthopedic surgeons uh, delivering the exercise programs for your patients. Yeah, it, seems, would, uh, like, amazing, right? it seems like an opposing viewpoint. <laughs> but uh, the amazing thing but is that, that from... Yeah, based on their, uh, you know, first uh, pilot of around 150 patients, they find the same improvements of 40% as uh, the Canadian group did. And so, of course, they had a bit more training. They have been to Denmark a couple of times and, okay. and Eva has visited them a couple of times to ensure that they understand their basics of neuromuscular exercise, that they do not have part of their uh, trainings as, as orthopedic surgeons. But Generally, you could say that they are able to deliver the program just based on a, a firm and, and thorough introduction and, and training. Amazing. Well, where, I mean, obviously you've seen this explosive growth of the program. Where would you guys like to see this move towards that it hasn't already? Well, I would say that, that this is now across... Um, four continents just by giving it, it uh, delivering it this uh, countries but but some of the the next uh, parts of the world that we would be be very supportive of is of course uh, middle or low income countries because mm -hmm. they also need a treatment like this we have had a, actually a pilot project in nigeria that was uh, conducted by a student that we had uh, in denmark and and she found similar results, but of course there are uh, some similarities, but also a lot of differences in, in delivering a program like GLAD in, in Denmark or Australia, or even the U.S. as compared to Nigeria. So, so the future lies, of course, in helping and supporting people from westernized countries to deliver this program, but also to support uh, middle and low income countries to, to be able to deliver a program like this in the future. Yeah, that's and uh, what a wonderful idea. Now, where can people go to find out more about GLAD? And where can they go? Let's say there's someone in the U.S. who's listening to this and says, "Wow, I'd really love to be able to be part of this program to bring GLAD to the United States or to bring GLAD to countries uh, across the world." Where can they Where can they find more info? Well. Um both uh, GLAD Australia, GLAD Canada, and GLAD uh, Denmark has uh, web pages. We, of course, in Denmark have a Danish web page, but we also have an, a translated version of the web page where, where people can read more about the program. Um, 
I would guess that if you just search it in Google, put GLAD in Denmark or GLAD Australia or, or even GLAD Canada and exercise or osteoarthritis, that you would that would be one of the first ones that came up. Um, I can so attest that to that. Be, yeah, <laughs> that's perfect. We have also just recently published an editorial in BJSM focusing on the GLAD program and also other publications that you can find on, on the Danish webpage uh, about the, the program. If you want to bring this program to, to the US or another country, the, the best way to uh, move forward was to would be to contact Eva, either Eva or, or myself by email, and then we would support you in what was needed in order to, to be able to deliver the program. But we have found out that that we would need a strong team of clinicians and research that, that together developed the, the national, or at least the local plan for how to, to do this. And, and we have a lot of experience from the collaborations uh, with Canada, Australia, and China to be able to tell people what is actually needed to deliver this. So it, it, it would take more than one person, but uh, mm. I'm sure it would possible to to set together a group of people that could support it well i am sure there are many people who are up for the challenge and if you want to email soren or eva if you go to the glad uh, denmark website which is glaid.dk and then you can just translate it to english there's a little section on the side that says for more information and it has eva Roos and soren Sko. Sko? Sorry, Sorensko. Um, Danish man. Uh, if you click on click on the links to their names, it goes right to their email. So it could not be easier to to uh, send these guys a message that hey, maybe this is something that I would love to do in my community or in my country. So, and I know Soren, you're also going to be in Bern in Switzerland in um, November, correct? Uh, I think that would probably be Eva. I'm not sure oh, I'm going done? to burn. Okay. I know <laughs> I'm not some, sure. Somebody, somebody's going to be there because I saw a little yeah. thing on the schedule about GLAD, so I wasn't sure if it was you or Eva, but someone's definitely going to be there. <laughs> that would be more. Eva then. Okay. Talking, so, so talking you know, more about the program. Yeah, exactly. And, and actually, she's uh, currently in uh, South Korea talking about the program. So, awesome. you know, there are inter interests... Uh, or, or all around the world and and well usually she goes uh, as I have small children but but sometimes I go too and it's 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 very uh, encouraging to meet people who are very very you know interested in bringing the program to their country and, and uh, we're of course very supportive of that because implementing evidence is so crucial for for us yeah absolutely and I and I think a big part of this program, and I'm so glad that you guys have this, is that data collection. Because you can actually say, hey, listen, this is where we started. This is what we've done. This is the evidence behind it. And that's what gets people excited about wanting to be part of this. So a big congratulations to you and to Eva and to the rest of the team at GLAD, because I think you've really developed a great program. So I'm sure you guys are very proud of it. Yeah, definitely. As I told you earlier, it's kind of a it's kind of a baby for us. It's 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 what what evidence uh, is all about. You need to bring that into practice. Absolutely. And is there anything else that we missed during this conversation that you'd like to say about Glad, or did we touch upon everything? Well, almost everything. I think you did a great job, uh, Karen, in in. Uh, going around all the aspects that's important for, for us and for the program. So thanks a lot. Anytime, anytime. And again, uh, where can people find you specifically? I know you're on Twitter. So what's your Twitter handle if people have some questions? Well, yeah, so it's uh, my Twitter handle is S-T-S-K-O-U. So that's my initials and then my last name. As I told you earlier, it's Forest in Danish. So that's, right. I'm not sure it would help help anyone but S T S K O U and you can contact me in there too and 
and uh, I would be happy to have more followers too. So please, please follow me if you're <laughs> so, interested in so the work. So follow, yes, definitely follow. And and I would also say follow. Like you, you have some really great uh, info to share as well, even outside of the Glad program. So everyone, definitely follow Soren because he does have a so much great info that he puts out into the world. So thank you so much for coming on the program. I appreciate it. Thank you. And everyone, thanks so much for listening and have a great couple of days and stay healthy, wealthy, and smart. Thank you for listening and please subscribe to the podcast at podcast.healthywealthysmart.com. And don't forget to follow us on social media.